Welcome to this Easter Day service, an Easter Day that none of us would have imagined even a few weeks ago. Although it's disappointing not to be together in church for this most joyous of days, nevertheless the joy and hope of Easter is not for church alone, it's for daily life and for every minute of our lives. The risen Jesus is the living, ever-present love of God that never leaves us. It is a life and a love that could not be defeated by death and holds each of us in its embrace. So, whoever and wherever we are, we can celebrate and proclaim. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. The Collect for Easter Day. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, all glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord and the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I know, as I said in my welcome, that it is disappointing not to be together on this day of all days, the highlight of our year. Not meeting together in what would have been our beautifully decorated churches is a sacrifice one of the many sacrifices that we are called to make at this time, not only as members of the church, but also as members of society, for the health and well-being of one another. So hard as it is, this sacrifice is an expression of love. And the heart of this sacrifice is not being able to meet together in person. This is a sacrifice that Christians and non-Christians alike are having to make. In normal circumstances, this weekend, families and friends would have been meeting together for the simple pleasure of one another's company. 
not being able to do so goes against our human nature and instincts. We are social beings. We need physical contact with one another. And whilst phones and the internet are very helpful tools, particularly at this time, they can't provide the actual physical contact that we need. Today, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, his victory over death, when he rose to new life in bodily form, in the reality of his flesh and blood, to be once again God's life and love in the flesh. The bodily nature of the resurrection means that Jesus rose to new life in person. This means that God loves and forgives us in person, in the reality of our daily lives. When Mary Magdalene and the other Mary met the risen Jesus, they were able to make human contact with him, and he, immediately after greeting them, said he would meet his disciples. The risen Lord wanted to meet his disciples and his friends to make physical contact. Our need and desire for human contact is a God-given share in his nature, revealed to us in Jesus. God wants to be with us and is with us in the person and spirit of his Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. The resurrection is God's living nature in our being. It calls us to love. Together, today, as we celebrate Easter, yes, we miss one another, but the fact of that missing is loving proof that we are held in the loving nature of God, revealed for eternity in his risen Son. Amen. And now, let us pray for the Church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Loving God, we thank you and praise you for your eternal and unbreakable love for us, so wonderfully revealed in our risen Lord. We thank you that united in the Holy Spirit, we are held in the unity of your love, even though we are separated by the challenges of the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are ill with COVID-19, for the medical staff who care for them. We thank you for the health professionals and scientists throughout the world and for all who are working to protect us from this virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are anxious for their loved ones. We pray for those who live alone, for those struggling with isolation for those living in difficult or dangerous circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor of your world, for refugees, for those living in refugee camps. And we pray for developing countries and places of war, for all those who are especially vulnerable to the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the kindness of neighbours and strangers at this time. Help us to remember that there is kindness and good goodwill all around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill or troubled in any way, remembering those in difficulties that are not connected to the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, trusting to the promise made by your Son to prepare for them a place in his Father's house, your eternal love. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we gather together our prayers with all your saints and ask you, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Before the blessing, I wish you a happy and blessed Easter. This situation won't last forever, and in the great in the grace in God in the grace of God and in human kindness we'll get through it. Take care and please get in contact if you need anything. In the blessing. The God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.